But then what happens is, is that it's not learned right at the beginning of Elul, or it's not learned, you know, it's not learned till towards the end of Elul, maybe even finishing. So I was thinking to learn it now, which is before Elul starts. Now, and this way, we'll be able to go into Elul with the with the correct understanding and the correct um, thought process. Now, within Lakota Teiro, which is it's um, page Lamed Gimel, Amun Aleph, if you look at the um, the red, if you go to the open, I put okay. the he, he bookmark it. Oh, I see. If you use the yeah, bookmark, you'll be able to find it. Actually. Right. See, because um, if you look actually at the page beforehand, if you go back one page, it also says Ani Ladoidi Vidoidi Li. There are two Ani Ladoidis. Now, there's one, the first one tends to be more, either learnt more or for sure it's more popular. It's the one where it talks about the parable, the mushal, about the king in the field. And that's the page before. But there's so that people tend to know. But then there's another one which we're going to learn. We're at least going to start. I don't think we'll finish the entire mimer. And hopefully you could learn the rest on your own. Maybe I could show you different links online to if you want some help with um, some uh, paperwork to help you understand the mimer. But um, there's actually, if we have time, we will look into in Tafshim Zion in 1987. The Rebbe has a, set a mimer on why there are two Aniludides and what they add to each other and why are they different. So we'll see. We'll see if we get that. But Okay. Let me... Which one you the second one? Do I to We're going to go to the second one, Lamed Kim. So first of all, let's let's just have a synopsis of the mimer of the previous Anilodidi, and that will actually help us understand this mimer a little more. So the last the the other mimer says that Anilodidi Vidaidi Li, which means I am to my beloved, I I get close to Hashem, and Hashem gets close to and um and automatically Hashem gets close to me back. It's one to the uh, one um, is a prelude to the next, and that is the Russia Tavis of Elul. So the Alter Rebbe asks, "What's the connection between the that pasuk and Elul?" And, it's, and then there's a question about if it's such a special time that um, Hashem has uh, reveals His Rachmanis is uh, is a perf- is a very good time to do tshuva during Elul. If that's the case, so then why isn't it a yomtif? Isn't it? Um, it should be just like Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, where it's holy days. Because you know, obviously, because it's a holy day, so therefore we act holy. But then somehow Elul is a whole is a holy month. But then we we don't uh, you know we still work. We have weekdays. We have work days during the week. So so the Alter Rebbe gives a parable of the king in the field. What happens is the king wants to have a connection to his to his subjects, to his his uh, to his arm, to his nation. Now the issue is is that not everyone could get into his into his or no not that many people feel comfortable going into his majestic palace where he's in all his majesty it's a little, it's, you know, it's uncomfortable and for not everyone is allowed to go in, in the first place. So what does, what does the king do? He goes out into the field, he goes on into the place where people are more mundane, are more, you know, just doing their work. They're not uh, dressing up like they would if they would go to the actual king, the actual palace. 
and being that the king goes out into the field, so that shows the people, the common people, that the king really wants to be close to them. And in other words, that even when they're not um, in their utmost, in their best clothing, and they're just sitting and working, and they're not uh, preparing to get into the king, into the palace. So even in such a place, the king wants to be close to them. So that um, that brings a feeling of closeness to of the people to the king. So much so that they start walking after the king when the king goes back to his palace and all his majesty. The king, the people want to run after him to get close to them and and actually go into his into his palace. So, so too with Elul, it's specifically a time of when there is work day, when there is a uh, revelation of Hashem's of of Hashem's Rachmanus. And that makes that uh, gives us a spark to be close, be close to, be close to him until we finally get to, we finally get to Tisha. So that was the first mind. Now we're gonna go and realize that this pasuk on in the doy is not even just that one pasuk. There's a few more words in that pasuk. Ani the so I am connected to the one, meaning to Hashem, Li, and Hashem is connected to me, Haroya Bashishanim, he is the one that gives me roses. So um if you will just look at it as you know just at first val at, at um at first glance, this is talking it's a sheer a sheer impossible. It's showing uh it's, it's like a love story between a husband and wife. So obviously, the the um, the husband the, the husband wants to give presents to his to the wife to his wife. So one of the presents will be a rose. Okay, makes sense. Um, but uh, there there must be some connection. Hineshishana, yes, but the question really is, what's the connection between? which we already explained is Elul, what does it have to do with a rose? What so, about the horse? Yeah. Shishana, it's a type of rose, the Yeshbot Tlesar Olin. It has 13 um, petals. It has 13 um, petals. <laughs> leaves. Keneged Yud Gimel Mechilin Derachame. Alluding to the 13 um Feelings of or mechilin uh, is midois uh, is um, emotions attributes of mercy attributes of mercy. So we actually see two psukim. The Altreb is going to quote two psukim that have to do with the that actually spells out. These thirteen attributes of mercy. The first one we say during Tashlich. Mi keil kamoicha. Who is this um, um, king? Like who is as great as you? Sheva pasuk. Ve sheva pasuk keil rachum. And also the other pasuk, which is in which is not in Nach. It's actually the first one was in Micha. Then the second one. Of Kel Rachum, that's what we'd say by Yud Gimel Rachum. We say during Tachnun, we say Kel Rachum. Right? Uh, Hashem Hashem Kel Rachum. That's actually interesting that he's starting from Kel Rachum, and the other one he's starting from Mikel Kamoichov. Because there is a machlek is of how you count it, right? How you count the 13. Does Hashem Hashem, is Hashem Hashem. Um, one of the thirteen. So here he starts from Kel Rachum, even though it's not the beginning of the pasuk. And Mikel Kamoicha is, in a way, also the the same way because Mikel Kamoicha could also be looked at as a prelude to the thirteen. <laughs> so Hashem Hashem pushes whether it's counted at all or it's counted as one or two. I don't know. Hashem, let's see how we count it. Hashem Hashem is one. 
Kel Rachom is two, V'chanun is three, Erech is four, Apayim is five, V'rav Chesed is six, V'emes is seven, and Noitzer Chesed is eight, L'alofim is nine, and Noitzer Ovoim is ten, Gofesha V'chatav is thirteen. Yeah, so Hashem Hashem is one. Wow. Oh, so then it's not, we're not, we're, that, that's not really the issue. Okay, fine. Um, but the, really, the well, why is he starting from that? I don't, okay, that's a good question. Shemisham hu mekayrat And you might think, is where does it get, where, how do we have the power to go back to to where we really were, the true. What what brings us? Well, what may, you would think is why why would Hashem want to forgive us in the first place? If we do something wrong, we did something wrong. If we did something right, it's fine. If we did something wrong, we did something wrong. What does it mean that we we get forgiven? Where where does that even come from? So the whole story with Moshe Rabbeinu is that Moshe wanted to. Wanted the Yidin to be wanted Hashem to forgive the Yidin for the Cheta Egal. And then Hashem says, Oh, by the way, um, if you ever need, if you ever want to want the Yidin to be forgiven, here are the words that will um, entice, entice me, or it, it will bring up the attributes of mercy. And through mercy, that's what. Gives you the power to be forgiven. So this is the Mokoir Hat Shuva. The Yurkim Minister Achamim, we know, is the Mokoir Hat Shuva. Okay. Liyais, which will cause Noise of a. Do you write later on in that, right? What we just mentioned. Later on, also, it's in Kisis, also back in Micha, is the same thing that this will cause Hashem to. Um, forgive our transgressions. The Haim, and the truth is, this whole story of Maestra Abenu Hamas Galim was revealed in the first, the beginning of Elod. Right, this whole story. We'll 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 say okay. Sha'az who Why? Because of the first day of Elod is uh, an auspicious time. What does this mean, auspicious time? Something happened on that day. These are actually the 40 days. Is when Moshe may he, peace be on to him. He went up to heaven to pick up to to uh to receive the second luchos. Now, I don't know why the Alter Rebbe mentions this next thing. I don't know why he's mentioning this next thing, but fine. Let's let's figure this out. So, what happened over here? What happened? We we're trying to figure out how is it an ace rotsing. What what happened? Moshe Rabbeinu went up for to get the second luchos. So you might think, oh, um, the first luchos. This is what Hashem wanted to have the first luchos. <laughs> this is, uh, but now we, you know, there was a chita egal. So okay, so we get the second, uh, we get the scraps or something like that. But no, the meaning then it's not an auspicious time. It's like. It's just a reminder of that we weren't, um, we didn't uh, follow the first set of luchos, and therefore they were they were smashed, and we needed to get a second one. That doesn't sound like an auspicious time, right? But no, it says over here, "O my yomim harishoyim b'rotzayim," just like the first, just like the first days, the first forty days, my Rabbeinu went up for forty days. And forty nights to learn Torah with from Hashem and have and receive the lofes, and that was obviously Hashem wanted this to happen. Hashem told Moshe to go up, so so too the same way. Also, the second the second um, 
Sifr, the second Luchis is the same thing. The second set of 40 days, which is Rosh Chodesh Elul, Tul Yom Kippur, is the same thing. So getting back to what we were saying before, the question of what's the connection between the beginning of the puzzle, which is referring to Elul, what does that have to do with Haroya Bashishanim? Because Shashanim is going on 13 attributes of mercy, which has to do with Elul. Okay, so this is so far... Um, there are no questions involved. He's just mentioning what's going on. Now we're going to get to what we have to understand based on this. B'tzarech Lahav. Now, in general, in Siddis, when there are no questions, but there are things that we need to know, we need to understand. B'tzarech Lahav, and there are things that we need to understand. That's a different way of saying a question other than like, how could it be this? How could it be that? It's more, we have to understand. Meaning, there is already an answer beforehand. We're actually going to talk later about how Torah, Torah in general, goes into the... Torah in general goes into this, is dealing with with mundane matters, with wor worldly matters. And uh, has to it has to it's dealing with what's kosher, what's not kosher. But Siddhis is a different even when it gets to questions, it's still just Vitsarik Lahav. Okay. So Vitsarik Lahav. But also um Vitsarik when it's something says Vitsarik Lovin, it's not that it's it's um putting the question as a lower thing, it's not so important. No, but Tzarek Lovin, you have to understand. It has to be understood. Not that even though it's not like, oh my goodness, there's a question, and therefore maybe whatever we said beforehand is not true. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that we just have to understand, but still we have to understand. But Tzarek Lovin, now in yin yud gimel midisar achamim b'chodesh al. What we kind of asked the same question in the first mimer, which is more pop, somehow more popular. We kind of asked the same question. Um, you could use the bookmarks um, to open it up, or if you want, um, want to use it with uh, the kudus, you could use this. Okay, Mao Indian. What's the point? What what does this mean that there are thirteen attributes of mercy during the month of Elo? See, we already mentioned beforehand that it's an auspicious time during Elo because that's when Yod Gimel Midasar Achim is going on. That's when um, Hashem taught um, taught Moshe Rabbeinu these thirteen attributes of mercy. So what's what does that have to do with Chodesh Elo? If we look in the halachis and actually how we how we deal with the world, how we how we daven is Bishlama Baseris Mechuba. In Aseris Mechuba, you talk in Shem Yimi Slicho Michila. We already know that is the days. It's set up as days of of. Um, being forgiven of of appeasement and being forgiven, and actually that is why we say that Hashem um, went over Ma'isha Rabbeinu. Then Hashem Hashem. Like we say during Tach. Now, actually, this is actually interesting thing. Now, this this thing about our service Truva saying the Yud Gimel Midas Arachamim is a is a minig Ashkenaz. Right during Chaydish Elo, really Svard says um, has have um, slithis the entire Chaydish Elo, right? No, oh, that's not why. Ramam actually had only for Sersi Meshuba, but the Syrians and Rakans do really yeah. interesting. 
But they have only one type of slichas. The slichas they say is not so long. It's the same thing they say. And then it just became... So how did Eretz Yisrael get... Um, I guess, I mean, the Rambam is, is many years ago. He has other Paschim afterwards. Okay, but but this is actually interesting. This mimer was actually said in public by the Alter Rebbe. It was said in Tov Kuf. Um, was it Tov Kuf Samach Zayin? In, um, in 1807. In 1807, which is close to the end of the life of the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe, um, his was in 1812 or 1813. It's a the problem there is because Russia had not gone over yet to the Korean calendar. So well, that was just either 1812 or 1813. But really the question is, mm-hmm. is that why is the Alter Rebbe saying that this is what we do? It's Nusach Ashkenaz. He already wrote his Siddur. He already wrote a Siddur earlier, right? The Sid, the Nusach Ari, Alpin Nusach Ari, the Siddur Alpin Nusach Ari was when he he wasn't even Rebbe yet, no? Wasn't it by the... Didn't the Tremagid ask him to do that? No. He, so that was in the 18... That was in the 1780s. Like Bir Hasim Ozon, which brother in the room, had put in the uh, Chedekot in the Russian military. When it really helps, didn't want, didn't want that there, but it's too late. He already printed Sidorin, so it kept him out of the big for brain, kept him out of a mimer. Ah, interesting. Yeah, but so I was just wondering why. I guess, I mean, he's not saying this is what we do, he, he's just saying that this is the reason why some do it. It's not, it's not like it could just be that it's going on. It's not like this mimer doesn't apply to, to Svartan. And he obviously knew that when Hagen was right. So that's not really what's going on. Okay. But really, he's saying that um, that really the the prevalent custom is to say, is to say the Yod Gimel Minister Rachamim during Aser Simei Tshuva. Obviously, alluding to, to what's going on during Aser Simei Tshuva. That's why we're saying it, because it's it's uh, Ace Rotson. And that's really what's going on is that there's his scholars of Yudgum Mursarah. It's time that, that Hashem has more, um, or, 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 um, more, as it's time for forgiveness. Right. But then, but then during Elul, we don't say, we don't say Yudgum Mursarah every day. We don't uh, have Slichis every day. So what's going on? Either it's Ace Rotson and it's a time. Of his scholars, if you're going to do the or not, if it is, so then we should be doing that. If not, if not, so then what is he saying that it's a structure? And therefore, what's the connection between Araya Bashishanim to Elul? What's the connection between you're going to do to Elul? Okay. Winning who, but the truth is, Dr. Rebbe says, Dini Hat Shuba. Because tshuva going back, going back to our true self, eino al avoyno yistafka, is not specifically alluding to going going back to how we were before, before, um, before we sin. Shari tzarechli is kol yom of the tshuva, because the truth is, every day we need to be, we need we need to be in the process of tshuva. Now, okay, if we were going to say that, okay, so every day the people do Averis every day, if we were going to say that, but no. It can't be that it can't be that Kol Yonwav It can't be that um the it can't be that Shuva is is uh Shuva is just an Avainis because what does it mean? After someone does Shuva, so then what does it mean that he needs to constantly be in Shuva? If he can't if, as soon as he does Shuva, then he already did Shuva. 
So what? So he has to do another Avera right then, right after Truba, and then how could it be that that there is that we need to be constantly in Truba? So obviously it can't mean that it's just Truba and Avedis, because it can't be that this um, concept of that you have to be constantly in Truba is is telling us that we need to do Avedis. That's, that's obviously not what's going on. So therefore, it must be that actually what we say every day during davening, during Shemana Esther, we say, and that we will go back to our true selves, which is being um, full in front of you, by you. Which obviously this is not just, this means something more than just um, having Truva and Averis. It's more to get closer to our true self, getting closer to Hashem himself. So, so first of all, we understand. So we understand from here a few things. First of all, right. The first question we had is that what does Yudkim Mitzrayim have to do with our service to make tshuva? But first, we so first the the Alter Rebbe is just mentioning that by the way, tshuva is really about getting closer to our true self, getting closer to Hashem Himself. But before we this is before this becomes a reason to answer the original question, we first have to understand what is the difference between um Tom of learning Torah and doing mitzvahs and what is greater either learning Torah or doing mitzvahs, and then we'll realize that Teshuva is even greater than both of them. But in order for us to understand what's how is it greater, we first have to understand what is it greater of. So let's get into what's going on over here. We actually see in the Gomorrah itself that Yash Bay's days there are two opinions. One says the Talmud God that learning Torah is greater than doing mitzvahs, the fulfillment of mitzvahs. And there's another opinion. That says my that doing mitzvahs, fulfilling mitzvahs is greater than learning Torah. The Nimnu and they uh, made a Talmud is Gemara. It's a Talmud. Is it Gemara Mishnah? It's Talmud. It's in Gemara. It's a Torah. So I got it. Oh, Talmud is referring to learning Torah. Okay. Meaning to learn. Talmud is like Limud. Limud to learn. We'll see. We'll see what it actually is alluding to. But the Nimnu, so they made a a, a uh, an election. Mm-hmm. You know what election election is? Yeah. The the no, these what happened was there were two opinions in the yeshiva. They were having an argument. No, it happens sometimes. Yeah. It's the best of us, right? So we had to figure out what's right once, but then, see, when there's an argument, we could either say, let's fight it out till the end, and then whoever wins, wins, and whoever loses, loses. That's one way. Or we could say, well, we don't want to fight. It's not a good thing to fight. Or maybe it is, but some people think it's not a good thing to fight. So therefore, we won't even argue in the first place. But what do we see what the Amiroim did? They had to, on one hand, they needed to, it was important for them to give their opinion. Some of them said that actually it makes more sense that learning Torah is greater than doing mitzvahs. And some of them had the opinion that no, doing mitzvahs is greater than learning Torah. So and both have a point. So, but then what are we going to do? You, are we just going to continue fighting? No, we have to come up with the solution. Mm-hmm. So, what did they do? They had uh, they're democratic. They made they made elections. They had to figure out. They made a vote. Oh, they, they made a vote. Oh, oh, oh. a poll. No, I'm not in touch with the No. 
that's when it started, no? So in Rome, in Greece. Yeah. So it's just America. That's what we learned in, uh, in, uh, yeah, good. So, so what do they do? They made elections. They voted the Gamru and they concluded that what the Talmud, what did they make a vote? The Talmud is God, the learning Torah, hold on. Learning Torah is greater. Now, why is learning Torah greater? Either maybe mitzvahs are greater. Because Shemebuli de Maisa, because even learn even doing mitzvahs is needs the learning of Torah. Because without the learning of Torah, you won't be able to do the mitzvahs. In order to know what to do, you need to learn. Meaning, learning Torah is obviously good for the learning of Torah. And obviously, doing mitzvahs is, is good for doing mitzvahs. Because without doing mitzvahs, you can't do mitzvahs. And without learning Torah, you can't learn Torah. But learning Torah has within it also the specialty of doing mitzvahs. Because it also... Um, it also is a prelude and it causes someone to learn Torah. Now, actually, I heard once that really this is a third opinion because learning Torah, the whole premise of the argument be between if learning Torah is greater or doing mitzvahs is greater, the whole premise is that they're two separate things, and they're both good within it in its own right. Not that it causes one or the other. So, meaning that there is a chance that learning Torah on its own will not cause someone to learn to do mitzvahs. It's possible for someone to just learn to learn Torah, and it won't cause him to do to to do mitzvahs. Layalim. It is a possibility. So, what was the shara? What was the the way to um, deal with this argument? Was to show that there's actually a type of learning that will actually not just bring you to learn more Torah, but it'll actually also cause you to do mitzvahs. Meaning that without um, the only thing that makes Torah greater is if it actually causes someone to learn to do mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. If not, then it doesn't have a specialty over, over mitzvahs, meaning that there needs to be, some of learning of Torah needs to also be the uh, the chaybis halavavis, the, the mitzvahs that have to do with the with the feelings, with the heart, which will cause, and learning that part of Torah will cause someone to do mitzvahs because he already realizes the specialty of mitzvahs and things like that. But then there's certain parts of Torah that Layalinu could be looked at as just a um, scholast. You know, it's uh, uh, like it, it, it uh, sharpens your brain, as if we care so much about our brains. Good. So, So, first of all, okay. So, so to understand what their argument, what, um, what their disagreement is. No, what's the argument? What's the difference between Machlekes and Obamaikam? What's the, to understand this argument and what are they even arguing about? Yesh Lahaktim, we first need to understand Lahavin a discrepancy seemingly in Tupsukim that we say many times. And uh, at least I could say for myself that I didn't even realize that there's this discrepancy. But it says, I am, I fill the heavens and the earth. Right, another post is the one side at the bottom of the uh, previous column. I mean, the balls from the brother. There seems to imply on the arts. That's a description between these two. Three. Oh, Vahaloiksev Maloichal Haaretz Kivoidoi. That his glory, not himself. Ani, the, okay, we'll see. That Maloichal Haaretz Kivoidoi. His, the, 
um, his um, glory is found in the in the earth. Veloy niskor shomayim. He doesn't mention the earth, the heavens. So what's going on? Does Hashem is Hashem in the in the heavens or not? One pasuk says that he he's every he's, he's in heavens and the earth, and yeah. But then the on the other hand, vigam sheshom namar ani mali. On one hand, one pasuk says that I am I fill them, I fill them. But over here it says kvoidai only his glory. Glory means something outside, like a um the the like uh let's say you uh the review the review of the item. It could, and that's like the the kvoide is let's say the Amazon reviews on a certain item. There's the item itself, and then what people say about it. So what people say about it is not the item itself, even though maybe someone might think that his review is even more important than the item itself, or uh, someone might think that the way people think of him is even more important than what he actually is, which is. Uh, yeah, um, an issue. So, but obviously, obviously, when it says animale is more, is showing more than just foida. If it's me, myself, then it's not just uh, my glory, like uh, how people think of me. Obviously. Achina you know, uh So the Alter Rebbe says that the truth is this is not an issue. Because this psuk, these psukim are really just referring to two ways that Hashem deals with the world. Two ways that Hashem creates and sustains the world. Achini Yodua, we already know, this mentions many times in Tanya, and obviously the Alter Rebbe is saying this mimer to his Hasidim, to his Talmidim, that are with him for many years already. So Achini Yodua, it's already known. That's who he's talking to, to people that already know it. There is, on one hand, how Hashem is fill, fills the world, and there's how Hashem encompasses or surrounds the world. And he's actually going to specify what this means. What does this mean? What does this mean, what does this mean that, he, that he fills the world? It's a ray of godliness of of uh, animshach, which which comes down benivroim into creations laachoyosom to give it vitality, to keep it alive, to bring it to existence, and to keep it alive. Like we see, and how does it? Where does it come from? From the ten utterances, asarim amores yehiar, like we see. Um, like we see in the beginning, you know, in in Operatius, we see Yehi Oir that how how did Hashem create light is by saying that light should should be, and also it says Bidvar Hashem that um, with the words of Hashem, right? We say this in in Davani Bidvar Hashem Shomayim Nas. Shehu mislabish. So, what does this mean? What, why, what's going on when Hashem is is recreating this this world and every item in this world? What's going on when He actually spells it out? When He says it a specific wording? Shehu mislabish bepnimiusam. He is in. Um, actually, later on, it's. Going to talk about a Lavosha's difference. That's actually interesting. Mislabish It's it's enclosing itself into the s the actual the um the inner mo the innards of the of the um ex of of what is being created. The mamish fully into the actual kishkas the actual um is uh, the inner it, the innermost sanctums truthfully? It needs to be. See, what does this mean? Well, first of all, in order for anything to exist, first 
for anything to exist, well, for Hashem to exist, Hashem already exists. So the, nothing needs to, um, nothing, Hashem doesn't need a cause to exist because Hashem already exists. But when there's a creation, when something is created, that means that in its own, on its own, it wouldn't exist. So it needs to constantly exist. But there's two, two parts to existing. One is that it exists, meaning Hashem could could create one being or another being. So in order for any creation to exist, it needs to just be created. But on from that point of view, it could be anything specific. It could be uh, it could be stone. It could be a piece of a piece of uh, vegetation. It could be an animal. It could be a person, and it wouldn't matter because they're all created. Meaning, before they didn't exist, and now they exist. So they're all creations. But then, obviously, there needs to be specific um, life forces for each thing, each thing separately. Meaning, what makes a person be created as a person and not an animal? Is it needs to be that Hashem specifically chooses that this being should be a person. That this person and then this person should have these um, mylas and these chesreinas have these tev, um, uh, these tev, this teva, these midas, all these things that that a person that encompasses a person that is specifically for that person. This actually shows that this actually brings to uh, hakara an understanding and uh, uh, yeah an understanding that. Every up and down, every change in a person's life, there needs to be, that Hashem needs to be in that specific space totally. Meaning, what causes one something to happen this way or, or the other way? That has to be from Hashem. And so there's nothing that, that just happens, matter of fact. There's not like um, one thing causes the next, that causes the next, that causes the next. Every specific, Every second, there needs to be there, every second does not exist on its own, and every detail doesn't exist on its own. There needs to be someone that creates it. So every detail, in order, it can't be, or or it shouldn't be that a certain time is someone feels that he's not close to Hashem, and another time that he feels close to Hashem, because even that time when the person doesn't feel close to Hashem, that time is also created by Hashem. And more so, that detail that there's a discrepancy between one day and the next, that's also created That's also created by Hashem. The only thing is that we have a choice of how to react to, to, to these predicaments. Okay, so now we're dealing with Mamalek Halam. That is, show, that is causing differences. Like, like the Alter Rebbe here says, um Right, like we said, that each exist, each uh, creation needs to have a certain a certain amount and a certain type of life force in order for it to to live as as it is. Like we see, for example, in um, in physical items. That there are different types. There are different types. Shadaimim agamshin is have gamkin maasara mamores benimshech boy gamkin chayes elikus moise hamaimer. Even though an inanimate object, what we said before, is actually being created every second by Hashem's by Hashem's utterance, and that is what gives it gives it. Uh, Gives its um, life force. The same way that the same way it works with other types of of entities, like a like the higher entities of a vegetation or We don't. Right, it's it doesn't. Uh, but then 
there's more um, possibilities for a for a vegetable to grow because it has more life for it has more strength. So there needs to be a specific amount of strength given by Hashem for it to actually be able to grow. A stone doesn't have that height. Bachayoiser, and then uh, an animal has even more highest. Gam minatzameach, even more than the vegetables. Vamedaber yoiser. Who right? This is understood that um, even though you would think that a stone is more strong than a person, because you ever tried to run into a stone? Ever tried? Don't try it. It's gonna hurt. The stones are very strong. We learned yesterday that when the when these when when Shlema Melech when when Shlema Melech um, brought the Aaron Kadesh the Aaron into the Kadesh Agadashim, um, he was so excited. For fourteen days, they sat and danced. They were were having a, were having a whole party for fourteen days, even past in Kippur, and they had th- tens of thousands of of uh, of oxen that were that were carbonis. and so much so that he couldn't use the bronze mizbeach that Moshe Rabbeinu built because it wouldn't handle so many carbonis. He had to use stone. So we see from here that stone is very strong, right? That's the connection. I was told you were you told me that that uh, I found out last night. That Wednesday night is supposed to be a halacha shir that is covered by the Gemara shir from the night before. So technically, this is a connection between, yeah, Hemshir from last night. Without only the shams, the one we're looking is also the shams. Right. And the connection is Shabbos. Shabbos is like Yom Tif. Elul is the opposite. Is seemingly the opposite of Shabbos. Meaning it's it's during weekday. Its specialty is that it's even weekday. Shabbos, Shabbos, Lord, Hamel. Ah, we're it's Shabbos of Lord. Yeah, we are his egg. Gamma is a Rufnium. Now, actually, this is an actual, this is uh, interesting. You might think that okay, with um, doing with that, you have letters, but who knew everything is like, yeah, complete you would same. think, no, but also kind of like you think. Okay, there's different during the weekday. Okay, there's different days, different times of the day. You know, I'm up this day, I'm down that day. And when it comes to Shabbos, oh, it's wonderful. Shabbos, you're on a on a whole different different uh, wavelength. But we see from here that even our Shabbos, even our Ruchnis, even Ruchnis, there's different level. I Meaning, you can go even higher, and higher and higher, even in the Can I more high? Some more high? You don't count. Yeah. Okay, so we see this also by illness or Ruchni. But where does this all come from? This all comes from the middle, the the attribute of Hashem with how he is as a king. Malchus is Malchus is when Hashem, we already learned in the last Mimer about the nimsh, the Moshul of a Melech Basadim, that he wants to, the Melech wants to be close to, wants to be close to the people of the sun. But the truth is that Malchus, Malchus is a king, has to, deals with every little detail, or wants to deal with every detail of a subject. So that's like Malchus, he's for show Nikram Malikal Almin. He actually deals with with every little nick and pran, every detail. Okay, so now we just finished explaining what's going on with Mamali Kalam. So now we understand why um, but now we have to understand what does this mean as a Shomayim Vesaretz animale, and why would it be both Shomayim and Aretz? Okay. Save of Kolam in who Bichinas Hashpov or Oris Elikus, the Ain in Nimshek when his lavish Betecho Elamis, Bichinis Kilui, Yes Musig Basso Gossam. It's not that it's 
the save of Kalamin is not able to be grasped. It's not able grasping is there's two thing two ways of grasping with your hand. When you grasp a cup, so what is grasping? Grasping is when you encompass, you cover from all sides the cup. Then you're grasping the cup. If you were just touching it, you're not encompass you're not grasping. Grasping is when you hold it in your hand, you hold it from all sides. But also it means not that you're inside it. It just means that you're surrounding it. Then that means that you're grasping it. So when you understand something, it's like you're grasping it. Because you when the way someone at least should be learning is when he figures out, let's say the parameters, let's say if there's a halacha, the question is where does the what's the parameters of the halacha? When does it when when does it um, apply? When does it not apply? And then it gets to a point where, oh, I got it. What does this mean that I got it? I got it means that I grasp it. I grasp the sides, like the corner, meaning the the parameters of the var seichel, of this thought that he just grasped, that he understands. So that is the malak, that is saiviv. Not physical. Right. Well, obviously, because grasping means you're grasping with your head, and your head is not a relatively gosh mystic thing. So obviously, it doesn't mean grasping physically. Grasping, you could grasp with your hand. Your head Every is right, touch but it's right. It feels. right, but it's more sublime. It's not uh, as concrete mm-hmm. as as uh, touching. Mm-hmm. So, Touching, it needs to. You need to um, actually like, like be f- feeling. Yeah, you have yeah. to be close. To, you have to be hitting it mm-hmm. in order to grasp it. With theory, with theory, you could. Um, also, it's it's. Um, 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 you could you could think about something and then just like that, not be thinking about it. So where did it go? It's as if it wasn't there beforehand. Because it's not a physical entity where it just sits there. So the word that would define that is comprehend. What? The word that would define with the mind would be comprehend. Ah, it's like comprehending. Right. Right. Okay. I got it. Right. So, save a kolalman is that something is grass. Okay. So, therefore, so, um, But this, oh, okay, so I, I explained it. Seems like I explained it incorrectly. And it really should be the other way around. But what? Seve kolama means she seve vlekulim b'shava. She in boy is chaplus min achar she in the mislavish kinas gili glasod. It's interesting. Why is that the connection? If it's gili basoga. Before he's saying. Um, before the whole time that he's that Doctor was talking about Malik Alman, he's he's speaking about about creation, and that each creation is specific. It has a specific uh, para, you know, specific parameters to its ex- existence, and that's what that's what Hashem is is creating it specifically that way. But that's not really dealing with with if you understand it, you don't understand it. That's just existing. It's not like that the person or that the entity um obviously the the, the daimim doesn't understand it doesn't have brain power so what does it mean that it, it understands but so good I, I, I don't know. how do you touch these words other than himself other than Oh, um, is that where he's? Where is this? No, meaning one from the other, like is 
Zavaza, meaning oh, that, different. So what different yeah. connotations to what it means? I couldn't figure out you. Right, one to the meaning. One to the other. Meaning, uh, let's say, uh, um, Atsilos has different parameters than than. Um, because you have Ephesula is the other way, other than it. Right. It's completely right. So, yeah, that's. I'm trying yeah. to figure out how. It's, that happened once to me. I was in I was in Yishu in in Montreal, and uh, um, we were learning Shari Chirvamuna. Actually, it's this talks about this um, Shari Chirvamuna in Tanya. We're oh, learning that, and the, and uh, and the um, by Chassidus that night, we would we were told by by the Mashpia by the teacher of Chassidus to learn this mime or that you know just to broaden our horizons uh, on the specific topic. So he once mentioned that I should learn a certain thing in Egeris Akedus, which actually I think it's it's Tanya these days. And I was sitting and I was sitting for like an hour on like a line and I wanted to ask him a question and there was a whole line of asking him questions. So I was sitting trying to understand what this word was. Mm -hmm. It said Hacholis. It was yeah I was trying to figure out what this word means. Like the, I always think it means like like the possibility. Like there's a difference of 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 actually doing something and then the possibility of doing it. Mm -hmm. So when something has the possibility, so it's it has an innate possibility, but it, it didn't actually come into fruition. So that's what I thought it meant, and it made no sense mm -hmm. to what's going on. And I tried to figure it out, and nothing's going. And then I come over to him. Like it was already my I come over to him and he's like, no, it's in Hecholis. Hecholis means that there's that there's so many Hecholis, oh. so many halls or or um mm -hmm. um space or groups. That's uh, nothing. Right. Of uh in in the chambers, I guess. Chambers, chambers in the in Ghanaian in, in in the different uh, in the Ilm of Salyan. So <laughs> so it's like the same thing that happens. Okay, we're gonna have Meyer. What's his name? What's innate? Huh? What's innate means? Innate? Um, um, um what within. So that which I'm not asking. Innate? Innate means like um, you have a prerequisite. What's prerequisite? <laughs> you're trying to bring the same Innate means like uh, it's, it's there for an answer, like uh, just Possible. you don't have to try. It's, oh, okay. You already have it. Uh -huh. You have the possibility. It's uh, already there. Like, uh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Like everyone, ev every Jew has an innate um, yeah. feeling to be close, close to his creator. What was that? Option. That's what I'm trying to do. Getting people to get close to the creator. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my see so before. I don't know if that would help. I know for myself that if I was, if I so that would have happened to me. I don't know, think if I would stop talking. I do it with a loving way, you're saying, yeah? Doesn't At least work. I know for myself. Other people, maybe other things okay. work. Others. So, but, so so everyone that, has. Bring a different ah, so the difference between Mali and Seviv is. Um, what's the connection between here? Okay. Um, uh, um, oh, of. Um, of that's what it means. It's my bizarre. I mean, Mali, meaning the Kalalmin, like that. There's no that um, that it doesn't matter. I'm and everywhere the same. So therefore, so therefore, um, ah, that's the connection between that's the connection between this mimer and the last mimer. What was the last mimer? The the Malchus meaning uh, the of Malchus. Hashem wants to be our king. But he's at home in his palace on his own, and no one feels comfortable going into the palace because because everyone's in the field right. in their normal overalls, in his, their regular overalls. They're not going to walk into the palace with their overalls during the weekday. Like so people. what happens? The king goes out into the field. That's El. The king. That's what's hello. That's what's going on. Because so then the king shows that it doesn't matter. That's like Savior Kalam. It doesn't matter. That's what Yudgum Rizarachim is like a gilui of Sevikon. It doesn't matter. Like the Sada, the, the, the people that are in the field, out of, in the palace, doesn't matter. I want everybody. So everyone come Everyone come with me into the palace. That's the feeling yeah, that right. El that Hashem reveals to us during Elul, and that brings in, that reveals our innate wanting to be close to 
our Creator until we finally get into Tishrei, where we I uh, where we crown Hashem as King. We have to get out of our trousers. Mm -hmm. I'll stay in my trousers. So Tishrei is normal. You staying in trousers? At least from this from this mimer. I'm sure there's other mimarim that say that you know events of progress. Ask him to come now. If you want to continue learning this, um, there's a few. A few places that could help a lot. There is something called Hasidut Bihira, which um, gives. Um, it's all online. You could do get with Nikudis and a bunch of artists, so that's good. Also, there's another thing, Hasidut online, which has. It's in Hebrew, but still it's um, very detailed, explains everything very well. And if you would like to learn in English, there's another website called